A fundamental principle in creation is to avoid unnecessary complexity. Simplicity reflects the mastery of a skilled creator. The universe often seems like a vast chaotic labyrinth. Yet, at its core, the foundational elements of our existence reveal an elegant simplicity, suggesting that whatever sparked the universe's creation did so with profound beauty and precision. This is illustrated by the concept of natural selection and evolution, a strikingly simple mechanism that drives the diversity and complexity of life. Some people used to say that in nature the strongest survive. This is false. The real rule is survival of the fittest, and fitness depends on the environment. Imagine a cataclysm, like an asteroid crashing into Earth. As food vanishes, big, powerful animals like lions or elephants needing a lot of calories perish first. But small creatures like rats who can survive on minimal resources thrive. Fitness isn't about strength, it's about matching your environment. An animal's traits such as fur color or size are often not inherently positive nor negative. Their value depends on the environment. For instance, white fur is a disadvantage in a lush, green jungle but a significant advantage in a snowy polar region. The set of an animal's visible traits, its fur, size, even behavior, is called its phenotype. Every individual in a species has a slightly unique phenotype, shaped by genes and sometimes lifestyle. For example, the color of the eyes is set by genes, but if an individual is overweight, is mostly determined by lifestyle factors. Most characteristics that are determined by genes are inheritable, and this plays an important role in evolution. Evolution is the gradual change in a species phenotype across generations, driven by natural selection. Natural selection is the process through which individuals more fit for survival in an environment have a higher chance of reproduction. Let's see how this plays out in practice. Many phenotypic traits are genetic and passed from parents to offspring, as seen in the fur color or temperament of different dog breeds. During reproduction, genetic code is copied and transferred to offspring, carrying vast amounts of information. Occasionally, small mutations occur in this genetic code. While most of an offspring genetic material mirrors that of its parents, these mutations introduce slight variations. Mutations may alter an offspring's traits or have no effect. When they do cause changes, the impact, positive, negative or neutral, depends on the environment. A mutation aiding survival in one habitat might be detrimental in another, shaping the course of evolution. Picture a population of pepper moths in the 19th century England. Each moth has a slightly different phenotype due to genetic variation. Some are light-colored, others darker. During the Industrial Revolution, coal soot darkened tree trunks, changing the moth's environment. A moth with a mutation for darker wings blended better against sooty trees, making it less visible to predators like birds. This darker moth was more likely to survive and reproduce, passing the dark wing mutation to its offspring. Over just a few decades, the darker phenotype became dominant in polluted areas. By the late 1800s, over 90% of pepper moths in industrial regions were dark. This shift is called industrial melanism. Natural selection favored a trait that boosted survival. Conversely, in cleaner rural areas, lighter moths remained dominant, as they blended better with unpolluted trees. When air pollution decreased in the 20th century due to regulations, trees lightened again. Now, lighter moths gained the advantage, and their numbers rose in formerly polluted areas. This process is slow in stable conditions, as mutations are random and beneficial ones don't guarantee survival. A dark moth could still be eaten by chance. But a peppered moth's rapid shift shows how strong environmental changes can drive evolution in just a few generations. Earth's 4 billion year history has allowed countless small changes like this to accumulate into the diversity we see today. Skeptics sometimes argue that small changes can create new species. But they can. A species is defined by whether two groups can produce fertile offspring. Horses and donkeys can mate, but their offspring, mules, are infertile, so they are different species. Over millions of years, enough trait changes can make groups so different they can't interbreed anymore. Think of Darwin's finches. One ancestor, isolated on different islands, evolved distinct beaks and became separate species. Given enough time, any trait can change 
turning ancestors into wildly different descendants. Some species like crocodiles barely change for millions of years. They're already a perfect fit. Others evolve fast when environments shift, like when climate change forces adaptation. But if the change is too fast, species go extinct and over 99% of all species ever have. Evolution isn't guided by a plan, it's just nature's laws and time, shaping life with no purpose but survival. Natural selection explains how life diversifies. But there are still some mysteries. Let's explore three big ones that hint we might not have the full picture yet. First, how did life begin? Once life started, natural selection took over, shaping it into countless forms. But at first spark, we're stuck. About 4 billion years ago, Earth was a chemical cauldron. Somehow simple molecules combined into complex chains like RNA and DNA, the building blocks of life. These are insanely complex structures. Imagine a library of code forming by chance. Scientists have tried recreating those early conditions in labs but so far without success. Was it a cosmic fluke? Or are we missing something about how easily life can emerge? The fact that life appeared soon after Earth cooled, within a few hundred million years, suggests it might not be so rare. But with only one example, we can't say for sure. Second, some traits seem too complex to evolve gradually. Take the human eye. It's a marvel of lenses, nerves and muscles, all perfectly coordinated. Without every part, it doesn't work. So how could it evolve step by step? Evolution suggests simpler versions like light-sensitive spots in ancient creatures gradually became more complex. But tracing each step is tricky and the leap to something so refined feels almost miraculous. Similar puzzles exist with other organs like bird wings. These don't disprove evolution, they just challenge us to dig deeper. And finally, in some stages of the past, animals have evolved so fast that it surprises us. Theoretically, the changes in phenotype are due to random genetical mutations, which explains the slow pace of evolution. Why is evolution sometimes so fast? Maybe we haven't got a full picture. What if genetical mutations are not only random, but there are other aspects we have missed? Natural selection's elegance isn't limited to biology. It's a universal pattern that shapes economies, technology, and even our search for alien life. In a capitalist economy, companies compete like animals in a forest. Those that adapt, for example a business that continuously innovates, gain market share and survive. Rigid or inefficient ones go extinct like blockbuster fading against Netflix. This mirrors natural selection but it's faster because humans intentionally optimize, unlike the random mutations in biology. In artificial intelligence, natural selection is at work too. Modern AI, like the systems behind chatbots or self-driving cars, often uses evolutionary algorithms. Programmers create thousands of virtual models, test them and keep the best performers. These models reproduce, combining traits to create better versions. In months, not millennia, AI evolves to solve complex problems from playing chess to generating art. It's evolution but engineered. Even culture evolves this way. Ideas like memes or trends compete for attention. The ones that resonate, like a catchy TikTok dance, spread while others fade. Is natural selection for information shaping what dominates our minds? Understanding how life emerged on Earth could reveal the likelihood of alien life. Life's existence here proves it's possible in our universe, hinting it may exist elsewhere. But with only Earth as an example, we can't calculate the odds of life arising on planets with suitable conditions. Estimates suggest millions of such planets exist, which is promising. To know how many are inhabited, we need the probability of life emerging on them. Unraveling Earth's life-forming process could help us estimate this. Progress has been slow, but life appeared soon after Earth's conditions stabilized, around 4 billion years ago, compared to Earth's 4.5 billion year age. This might mean life forms quickly under the right conditions or Earth was just lucky. Discovering life forms on Earth with a distinct origin from our shared ancestor would strongly suggest that life arises readily under favorable conditions. Such a finding would imply that the biochemical processes leading to life are not rare but a relatively common outcome on suitable planets. 
For example, if we found microbes with a unique genetic or molecular foundation, it could indicate multiple independent emergences of life on Earth. Unfortunately, no evidence of such alternative life forms has been uncovered, leaving this possibility unconfirmed. The universe is so big that it's scary. In its vastness, who knows how many creatures beyond our Earth ponder, just like you and me do right now, the possibility that we, their aliens, exist. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.